Good afternoon. Come on, you can do better than that. Good afternoon. It's great to see so many familiar faces here in San Jose. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And it's really our pleasure and our honor as part of AMD to host this APU 13 Developer Summit. So what are we going to do over the next couple of days? This is really a developer's wonderful dream. It's really about how do we make heterogeneous computing happen in a big way, not just around silicon, not just around developers, but all together as a package. And this is about sharing with each other, learning, networking, and really driving an ecosystem around the future of computing. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes on the AMD perspective, and really to give you an idea of what we at AMD are trying to drive in this ecosystem. So first, when you look across the universe at what's driving computing, there are really a couple of key trends. You know, first, on the client side, it's really about how do we get more computing power to the client in any form factor, any time, any place, anywhere, and in any, in any data format. So when you think about the number of compute applications that are increasing, if you think about how gaming is becoming super real, and it's not just something that you see rendered, but it feels like a true motion picture. And when you look at the quality of displays, as we've gone from 1080p now to 4K displays being readily available, that's a tremendous need for compute. And that is really what is driving a lot of the compute um, horsepower going forward. The other thing is, when you have all of this data coming from all of these connected client devices, you need to be able to access that data in a much broader cloud environment. And you're going to hear a lot about how we're taking APUs from really client devices into the cloud today and all through this uh, session. And it's really about how do we get much more compute and data into different form factors for more parallelizable workloads going forward. So these are the things that we see at AMD. Now, when you look at how to really make this happen, you know, the fundamental of this is around heterogeneous computing. And what is heterogeneous computing? You guys know all about this. It's really the merger of multi-core CPUs with multi-core GPUs that create the APU. And if you think about this form of silicon, we have really been exploring this over the last couple of years. We started in 2011 with the APU, and AMD created this category because we believe that the days of single-threaded performance are over. It really is about how do we make heterogeneous computing real. There have been a lot of versions of heterogeneous computing in the industry, but all of them suffered from not being very developer-friendly. In other words, it was hard to program and hard to use all those resources. So as we have looked at how to improve that APU design over the last several years, it is all about being developer-centric. That is the theme of this couple of days. It's how do we make the power of silicon something that the developer community can really use. And if you look at the evolution of silicon, you know, we started in 2011 with just putting CPUs and GPUs on the same chip, having a memory bus and an infrastructure that went between it, but really, let's call it you know, integrating two pieces, you know, two engines on a single die. We improved some of the video and encode and decode engines in 2012. In 2013, this year, we shipped the first uh, full SOC systems in our Kabini and Tamash APUs. We also are shipping a large number of semi-custom APUs in the um, server market. And when you go forward, you see that 2014 really brings much, much more interesting features as we really bring some of this together. So we're going to focus on some of those new features as we go through the next couple of days. Now, what are the themes of APUs? What, what would I like you to think about? I'd like you to think about this as truly the future of computing. So we looked at APUs first in desktops and in notebooks. In 2013, you'll see quite a few tablets based on APUs. You'll also see next generation consoles with both Sony and Microsoft launching their next generation consoles this month. They are going to be on semi-custom APUs based on AMD. We'll also talk about servers and embedded applications. And so the real, the, the real message here is that there's just a tremendous amount of growth in APUs. 
as a developer, when you think about development systems, you want to have lots and lots of um, systems using the same technology. And what we see is that the initial incarnation of APUs were primarily PC-centric. So we saw, you know, let's call it in the first couple of years, about 80 million APUs that were um, shipped. As we look into 2014, that will double. You'll see over 150 million APUs, and you'll see both PC and non-PC um, APUs. And in a couple of years, we'll see over 300 million of these types of devices. And that is really trying to take the power of heterogeneous computing into new markets. And that's why you actually see that as we look into the future, we'll see more APUs in non-PC applications, things like gaming, things like embedded, things like servers, um, than the traditional um, compute area. The other thing that is very, very critical about this conference and what we at AMD are trying to do is it is about an ecosystem. So you're gonna hear a lot about the heterogeneous system architecture, the HSA foundation, the founding members, and why is this important to us? When we looked at this heterogeneous computing, we said we are sure that this is the right way to go for the industry. It's absolutely the right um, technical solution, but without the software ecosystem, we wouldn't get the full benefit of it. And so a couple of years ago, we decided to start the HSA Foundation. We have been extremely pleased with the membership, and many of the members are in this room, so I really wanna thank you for the support of the HSA Foundation. We now have over 40 members of HSA Foundation, as well as 10 universities. And the key thing is, you take everything that we see, and we see that two out of every three units that are gonna be sold over the next couple of years will be from HSA Foundation partners. These are partners who really believe that heterogeneous computing is the center of next generation computing. And so this is the reason that it's important to have APU 13. And this is the reason that it's important to gather this group of people. So you're gonna see some great keynotes over the next couple of days. And it's really about how do we make the development community um, more, with more tools and more capable of using the power of the silicon. So when you look at the world from AMD's perspective, it is about devices, um, devices that have leadership graphics, leadership gaming, um, you know, mobile devices as well as embedded. Um, it is also about a very broad customer set. We believe APUs can go into numerous markets with numerous customers, including some of the ones that I mentioned earlier. We also believe that um, APUs and HSA are um, really ISA agnostic. So it's not about x86 or about ARM or about another architecture. It's about creating something that can take both the processing element and the graphics element as well as other accelerators together in a simple programming environment so that we can get power from that um, ecosystem. And the last point is it is about being developer centric. So Throughout the next couple of days, what you're gonna hear from all of us at AMD, as well as our foundation members, is how do we make the silicon easier to use? How can we use more of the open source community? How do we get the HSA Foundation to become an umbrella for all of the different things that we need to make this successful? And it's including things that are very specific, things like OpenCL and C++ AMP and DirectX, as well as Java. You'll hear some keynotes um, later in the next couple of days, it is really about how do we bring the development communities together of some of the very, very key open source efforts that exist today and really bring that together for heterogeneous computing. So that's our view of the opportunity over the next couple of days with AMD. Now, I can't be up here and not spend a few minutes on technology because that's what we all live and breathe for. So what do we commit to you? We commit to giving you extremely powerful silicon to really write all of those applications on top of. So what's next? A couple of things. First of all, hopefully many of you have heard about the AMD Radeon R9290X. This was our codenamed Hawaii graphics processor. It was just launched in the last couple of weeks, actually. Uh, we launched it um, in Hawaii, uh, which makes sense. Um, we started selling it um, a couple of weeks ago. And what this technology has is it's really the best of the best of graphics. And when you think of heterogeneous computing, 
it really is about having leadership graphics and leadership graphics capability. We also announced with it several very, very key um, software ecosystem aspects, things like um, Project Mantle. And we're going to talk a lot more about Project Mantle because it is an opportunity to unify the gaming ecosystem, bringing console-like graphics into um, the PC world. Also introducing a new technology called True Audio that enables um, really high resolution audio to be played together in our um, you know, graphics and CPU systems. Also the best system for 4K gaming and beyond. So you can see a tremendous amount of compute capability in this graphics uh, technology. And again, available this quarter from, um, from AMD. Now, moving forward, this is the next generation APU. This is what we're extremely excited about with our launch of Kaveri. You know, we've told you over the last couple of quarters that Kaveri would be starting to ship in the fourth quarter of 13. I'm telling you, Kaveri will start shipping in the fourth quarter of 13. This is the first time we're gonna talk about some of the features of Kaveri. So you're gonna get to hear from a lot of our, um, our folks about what we're trying to do with Kaveri, and particularly how Kaveri becomes a first because it's silicon that enables the heterogeneous um, ecosystem with HSA features. When you look at some of the key features of Kaveri, one of the things that we like to say is the best form of flattery is imitation. And when you look at the APUs and where APUs have gone over the last couple of years, including from our competitors, you'll see that others have integrated CPU and graphics on the same chip. Um, and there's been increasing amount of graphics compute on those chips. But when you look at Kaveri, we have almost 50% of the die being graphics. Almost 50% of the die. Over 850 gigaflops. And why are we doing that? We believe that this really unlocks a different level of compute. A different level of single chip compute than we could get in any of the previous silicon generations that have existed before. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, Kaveri. Um, Kaveri is um, a completely new architecture. It has um, a new CPU core. We call it Steamroller. Up to four multi-threaded cores that have very, very good computational efficiency. It also has the new Graphics Core Next architecture. This Graphics Core Next architecture is the same architecture that we have in our, direct, uh, our discrete GPUs it is also the same architecture that we have in our next generation console chips. So it provides a tremendous amount of graphics capability in a single die. In terms of what's special about it for HSA and the HSA features, this conference is all about heterogeneous computing. What we at AMD wanted to do is provide the first look at what silicon could bring for those capabilities. So as I said, we have a tremendous amount of compute capability, over 850 gigaflops, mostly from the GPU. Mostly from the GPU. And as I said, the issue in the past has been, it's been hard to access that capability. And it's hard to access from a programming model, it's hard to access from all the features. We've added two very, very important features to Kaveri that really allow you to access that full graphics compute. The first one is really our um, unified memory architecture, or we call it HUMA. And the reason for that is, you know, in the past, both processors and the graphics units really um, had separate memories. And so it was fairly efficient if you wanted to run in each of the units. But if you wanted to run across the units, you actually had um, quite a bit of um, overhead involved. So adding Huma was a very, very important part and really allows us direct access to the memory for both um, the graphics as well as the CPU unit units, so the first time on silicon. The other thing is also allowing the graphics to be, you know, as Phil Rogers would like to say, a, a first class citizen. You know, it used to be that the processor would always be the guy who decided, um, you know, how to execute. And really having the flexibility to really have both the graphics as well as the CPU um, execute instructions is a very, very key feature. So these things make Kaveri really one of a kind in terms of silicon that, are, that is available in the industry today. And we're very, very excited about what it can unlock for the developers community and particularly for the heterogeneous uh, development community. 
Now, with that, we've also added some of the features that we've added on the graphics capability. So you'll add things like true audio technology, which will really allow us to have um, you know, full um, audio uh, synthesis capability in um, Kaveri, similar to what we had in our discrete graphics or Hawaii. So you can play um, very real life, um, real um, game titles uh, with true audio. And in addition to that, we're also adding um, this uh, project mantle um, capability, which really allows you to bring, let's call it all of the console-like graphics to both discrete graphics as well as to APUs for you know, PC gaming. This is an incredible feature if you think about it. It's a very, very unusual case where we have um, you know, two um, major launches of um, game consoles this year using um, a similar Radeon graphics technology. This allows us to bring some of those optimization techniques to PC gaming as well, and it's a very key feature that we're adding on uh, Kaveri going forward. So with that, I wanted to show you a little bit about what Kaveri could do. So let me invite John Taylor back up here and Chris so that they can show us a little bit about Kaveri. John? Thanks, Lisa, very much. Um, yeah, very excited to share this demo with all of you. Um, what you can see from uh, the slide that we're showing here is this is going to be a 1080p gaming demo. So we're bringing Kavari first to market in the desktop market. We're a 1920 by 1080p display, and gaming on that kind of a display is really the standard. Um, this is a competitive demo. So what you'll see is an A10 version of the Kavari APU competing against uh, an Intel Core i7-4770K paired with an NVIDIA GT630 GPU. Hey, we'll, JT? Yes. Why did we choose this particular uh, combination? That's a, that's a great question. So I think the, um, the simplest answer to that is you know, the idea of the APU and how it can become much greater even than the sum of its parts. There is conventional wisdom out there in various markets that it's always best just to put a discrete GPU in the system. Oh, that dedicated memory to the GPU, that's really what's going to give you the best experience. So the idea of a single chip um, and I'll add at, at perhaps a, a much smaller price point when you see how it actually comes to market versus the combined two pieces of silicon that we're going to compare it to, that you're actually going to see a significant difference in the experience from the Kavari system. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead, Mr. Mike Sell, and kick this up and get going. And for those of you on the webcast, welcome. And what you'll see will first be the competitive system or the Intel plus NVIDIA system. For those of you here in the room in San Jose, you'll see we are running Fraps. You see on the right-hand system, that's AMD. That's a Kavari A10 APU. We're running Battlefield 4 with our partners EA and DICE, 1920, 1080p at medium settings. We're running flap, flap, excuse me, Fraps on the Intel plus NVIDIA system. You see that in the lower right corner. That's on the left hand here in the room. So those of you on the web are seeing the Intel system, you're seeing about 10, 11, 12 frames per second. You can see some of the lagging. You can see that it's not smooth. It's not what we would consider meeting the, uh, the smooth gaming standard. Okay, so if on the webcast, and if here in the room, we can now take our attention to the system on the right. Again, a single chip, Kavari A10, powering more than double the number of frame rates, a playable Battlefield 4 experience at 1920 by 1080 with a single chip. Also bear in mind, for those of you who are following the Battlefield 4 franchise closely, um, EA and DICE have announced that they will do a manual version of Battlefield 4. This is not that. So this experience is only going to get better. As you guys know, we continue to optimize the drivers up until launch, partnering with EA and DICE on the Mantle version of games like this. So that's what we have to look forward to with Kaveri, Lisa. Fantastic, JT. Thank that's you. All right, so you saw a little bit about what we have to offer. I will also show you, you know, we talked about the desktop systems being A10s, but we'll also have notebook systems with Kaveri that will uh, be shipping in the first half of 2014. This is an 18 millimeter ultra thin uh, notebook using Kaveri running Windows 8. But you can see the power of the system. So we have a couple things to tell you. And the couple things are, you know, first, again, um, our launch at Kaveri is very special to us because it is really the first time we're launching in desktop first um, from the standpoint that, you know, we know the enthusiasts, gamers, and really want to have the power of the technology. So we'll be launching an FM2 Plus in um, early January, and you'll see that um, first at CES, and then we'll be on shelf January 14th. 
You'll also see the whole theme of the APUs is that the same technology can go into a number of different applications. So you'll see it in desktops, you'll see it in notebooks, you'll see um, similar parts in embedded as well as server products in 2014. So this will be one of our broadest launches of a technology. Uh, the heterogeneous architecture features are really key to what we think are going to make uh, Kaveri a very, very special product. So from that standpoint, you know, I want to just give you once again, an extremely strong welcome from AMD. We really appreciate all of you joining us for the next couple of days. We know it's a huge investment in your time. Um, I hope you'll see the opportunity to network and really understand technologies from various, um, uh, various companies and various universities. Key, you know, our commitment to the development community is very simple. We will give you undisputed graphics and multimedia leadership. That's a commitment. You'll also hear from Mark Papermaster on Wednesday he will tell you that we are committed to leadership technology in terms of cores and platforms going forward. And then finally, it's about innovating on the APU. We love the APU. We believe the APU is the future. We believe to be successful, we need the entire ecosystem to be there. So again, these are the key things that um, we commit to from AMD. Now, of course, I can't leave without one more thing. So the one more thing is, again, it is wonderful to see so many friendly faces in here. You guys may have gotten a little sheet like this when you walked in or, or came in from uh, uh, registering. What we want to do is also give you an opportunity to take some of this home. And um, we're going to be giving away um, a couple of AMD A10 APU systems, the MSI motherboard as well as the system, and the Kaveri A10 as well as a couple of the AMD Radeon R9290Xs. So if you make sure you fill this ballot out, on your way out or sometime in the next couple of days, Mark will be drawing some names at the end of the conference um, to give this out. So again, thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the next couple of days.